Happy Monday. Is it working? It is working. And it is Monday. And today, Net Backup 7.5 came out. You'd think I'd have a new t-shirt. Yeah, it's got the musky shirt on. Timberwolves are playing the Clippers tonight. And although we're 2-0 and against the Clippers, we may be due for a thumping. I hope, hopefully they don't do really badly at home. Because they were 500 on the road. Really pretty good, except for that one disastrous game. But when they played the Blazers on Saturday, very satisfying. And broke a streak of about seven years since Minnesota had gone to Portland and won. So that was a good deal. Hey, Chuckles. It's currently 5.09. It's currently 5.10. It is 33 degrees outside. It actually is the first hour or so this afternoon. The first above freezing temperature since Friday, believe it or not. It's been in the 20s all weekend. Tomorrow it's going to be 50. They keep saying that, so it's got to happen. It must be true. Tomorrow's forecast high is actually 55, so 50 doesn't seem that off the wall. Although, given today's high, it was barely above freezing. Eh, that's how the weather goes. So, we're in shorts tomorrow. Be here for that. Four home games this week. Today, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Back to back. They don't let us sleep in the Target Center overnight. I asked. I think it'd be a great slumber party. But that's probably why I'm not in marketing. Couple comments from Friday, which I won't spend too much time on, but a couple of you wondered why I can't pay my mortgage except via check, and I don't remember why. It's something weird. I should add that although Wells Fargo has my mortgage, I don't actually bank with them. I'm sure that's part of it. I'm still part of that credit union in Modesto where it's incredibly inconvenient and I can't deposit checks anywhere except for two places in a seven-county area. But I am too lazy to move to a local credit union. But that's another story. <sighs> Scotty Flamingo asks, what's my favorite episode of Night Court? Somebody started one of those best worst threads. God, we've had a rash of those, haven't we? And, you know, I'm to blame because I answer them and I take part in them when I should be saying, stop starting these threads. But Night Court ended up being discussed quite a lot in the character changes thread. And I said something about how the first season was the best. Eh, the first season, I think, was the best. But if you ask me to name my favorite episode, I haven't seen the show in maybe 20 years easily. So I will say something from the first two seasons, and then I won't be able to get more specific than that. I can remember individual scenes, but I can't remember any complete total episodes. But I was reading about Night Court probably on Wikipedia because I was too lazy to go find the proper place to read about it. And they kind of nailed the description. That when it started, it was like a Barney Miller set in a courtroom. Very realistic. And it was about people filtering in and out. Pretty much taking place in one scene, in one, on one set. And that's probably why I liked it. Because I actually liked, I was a big Barney Miller fan, despite being too young to watch Barney Miller. But it was kind of a Barney Miller in the, of the courtroom. And then they decided that they were going to be all cartoony and slapsticky and no fun. And that's kind of when I they lost me, and it wasn't as great. So that's why I'm a big fan of the early night court. And I, it helps that I was an impressionable age when it started. I think I was 12 or 13. Look it up. You can figure it out. Which leads me to another television event. On Saturday, on Saturday Night Live, one of the sketches involved a morning zoo type program on a fictional hip hop station in Shakopee, Minnesota. Shakopee being 20 minutes south of Minneapolis, I believe. I've never actually been there. I think I've driven by. Anyway, this got some people in a real tizzy. Like, oh my god, did you see? They talk about Minnesota. They talk about Minnesota. It's, I expect a little more from 
the contemporary metropolitan folks living here as to not get excited just because they were mentioned. Oh my god, Mary Tyler Marshall is on. It just seems kind of bushly and small town. And so I asked on Facebook, does this do the people having this reaction strike you as quintessential Minnesotans or perhaps transplants from another place where they feel they have to leap on these things to remind them of relevancy. And I think, I don't know whether it was the way I asked it or the way I got responses. I should add that almost all the responses were from people who were not Minnesotans. So all the local people are ignoring my question, which is kind of a Minnesotan passive aggressive thing to do, but, but I digress. But I hope that explains a little more of what was going into me thinking, my thinking of beyond making that point, because there were two or three really notable people, people in my timeline, people on Facebook who, who leapt on it and they were like, oh my God, you all have to see this. They talked about Minnesota. And at least in the tech world where I am and in some other technological high profile, I don't know whether it's uh, you know, VC or business building type deals. Venture capital is what VC stands for. People ever can remember that, but they always seem to whine and cry because they believe the Midwest gets short shrift in the world of Silicon Valley and Silicon Alley. And again, it seems kind of like a, you know, act like you've been there. You aren't really doing that when you're whining about it or on the other end of the spectrum, just jumping on it when you get mentioned. It's like that joke uh, on Family Guy where they say Carol Alt a million times and then they cut to Carol Alt's house like, they're saying your name. Of course, in the Family Guy version, Carol Alt and whoever she's talking to are 100 years old. It's like, who's saying it? Uh, the family man. Everybody remembers that scene, right? This is a very TV-centric deal I'm talking about here. And yet I'm on the medium that's going to replace TV. Nah, YouTube. Over the weekend, I did figure out how to make YouTube show up on my Blu-ray Samsung Smart Hub. <laughs> and we celebrated that by watching three episodes of Jizz. Probably shouldn't admit that. But if you haven't seen Jizz... J-I-Z. Look it up on YouTube after you're done listening to me. It is much more entertaining than I am. With that, and if you left any comments and I forgot about them, I haven't actually been on YouTube today. I'm just assuming no one left any comments. Since I have one, one minute to kill, I will go ahead and type up. Can I log in while I talk to you at the same time? That is multitasking, my friends. Just too slow. All right. My inbox. Does it contain any comments that I need to address? If they are, can I address them quickly? No comments. Perfect. Uh, leave me a comment. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Perhaps I've given you something to think about and something to respond to. But perhaps I have not. We will all find out together later. Tomorrow. Super Tuesday. All politics. All shorts and exposed knees. I'm Chris Zimmerman, if you haven't uh, already heard. If you have heard, who'd you ask?